In everyday language and in science, a lot of people prefer to use degrees instead of radians for angle measure. But when we do this, when we use degrees, we need to be a little careful when we're using our trigonometric functions. We have to indicate that we are using degrees and not radians. So for example, if we were thinking about an angle with a measure of 90 degrees, and we wrote sine of 90, this actually wouldn't quite convey what we want it to convey. Most calculators by default work in radians, so sine of 90 would give us the output of sine when the input is 90 radians, but we were thinking about 90 degrees. So in this case, we would actually want to write sine of 90 degrees. If we don't indicate this, we generally, at least in mathematics, assume that this number in the input is a number of radians. So if we want to indicate a number of degrees, we need to put this degree sign with our uh, angle measure within the input of our trigonometric functions. So it'll common to, it's common to see expressions like this, and we will work with some of these in this class. So for example, we might see something like sine of 90 degrees, and we should be actually uh, be able to think about what the value of this expression is just as, based on what we know about angle measures and we should have a pretty good image of a, what an angle with a measure of 90 degrees looks like. So for example, an angle with a measure of 90 degrees looks like this, so that's 90, 90 degrees. And if we were to draw a circle centered at this angle's vertex and we looked at the terminal point here, that terminal point is one radius length above the center of the circle. And therefore, sine of 90 degrees is just equal to one. Let's look at another example of this. Let's suppose we have this right triangle right here. We have an angle of interest of 40 degrees. So we see the degree symbol there. And the hypotenuse of this right triangle is eight inches long. Suppose we wanna know the slope of this right triangle's hypotenuse. In this case, we know we're gonna use the tangent function because we know that um, interior angle measure right there. So we wanna do tangent of 40 degrees. Tangent of 40 degrees will give us the slope of the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So we know how to represent it, but it's another challenge to actually compute this value. So if you entered tangent of 40 into your calculator, it might give you something that's not what you wanted. So if your calculator is in degree mode, if you can turn your calculator into degree mode, then entering tangent of 40 would work just fine. But by default, most calculators work in radians. And so we would have to convert this uh, 40 degrees into a number of radians. So 40 degrees is 40 3 60ths of a full rotation we know that there's two pi radians in one full rotation. So converting 40 degrees into a number of radians looks like this, and therefore this expression right here is maybe what we would enter into our calculator to actually determine the slope of the hypotenuse of this right triangle. And in this case, this has a value of about 0 0.839, and so the slope of this right triangle is about 0.839. It's always good to check your answers afterwards. So if you accidentally, maybe you were just speeding through this and you actually accidentally entered tangent of 40 into your calculator, tangent of 40, if we're working in radian mode, will actually give us a value of about negative 1.12. And we don't expect to have a negative slope for this right triangle. And therefore we should know, this should give us an indication that we did something wrong and point us to the fact that we need to be careful that we're working in degrees and not in radians.